Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on moviehousememories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. Hello everyone, my name is Shane A. Bassett and I am the uh, unusual host, a rare host for today's edition of Movie House Concessions. Uh, we are doing our very special Academy Award edition. It is the 95th annual Academy Awards ceremony coming up in March and uh, joining me today is a couple of my friends from uh, very far away. They're actually that far away there from yesterday because I am <laughs> in the future. So first of all, hello Patrick. Hello, Shane. How are you? Good, thank you. And, uh, of course, my fellow uh, friend, and honestly, I think she loves the Oscars as much as I do. We all do. That's why we're here. Hello, Laurie. Hello, Shane. Well, Hello, Patrick. We, uh... <laughs> Hello, Laurie. <laughs> so, uh, here we are for the Oscars. Before we get into any of our, uh, you know, like our predictions, well, why don't we just start off by thinking about what might happen this year? Do you think there'll be any surprises? And I don't really think there'll be any major shocks like when Will Smith got uh, up out of his chair and slapped the host, Chris Rock, last year, or <laughs> anyone jumping across the stage naked like David Niven had happened to him and all the other surprises. Do you think anything out of the blue might happen this year, Patrick? I, well, that's hard to predict. I mean, if you would ask I mean, I last year, last year, if you would ask, well, what do you think the odds of somebody getting up and just slapping the shit out of it, one of the presenters? I would have gone, that's never going to happen. Whoa, 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 let me qualify it. What if it's a best actor nominee? And I'd go, oh, oh well, <laughs> you know, obviously that's a Will Smith comment right there. I would never have thought that was going to happen, but it's a live television show. Anything can happen. And uh, I don't think you'll have anything as bizarre as that. I think, I think there they're probably going to play off that and you know probably poke fun of that and their mishandling of it sure. last year uh, but i don't i don't i don't think you're going to have anything nearly as bad as that i mean even in our lifetimes you know I, you have the david Niv niven streaker and then you have will smith slap and chris, chris rock other than that you don't really have that many things very often that happen completely unscripted yeah oh and let's not forget one armed push-ups by jack clance yeah yeah, but, but that's you know, but yeah, that's that's, like that that's an acceptance speech. I mean, yeah, there was it was unexpected, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the equivalent of a streaker or a physical assault upon a presenter. True. <laughs> yeah, very true. Let's hope it never happens again. And he won't be there this year anyway. Uh, Laurie, do you think any surprises might happen, or too hard to predict for you as well? I, I think that um, because of what happened. Last year, the controversy and the backlash, I think people are going to be on their best behavior. But you never know with people. Um, <laughs> um, but I do think after there was another snafu at the BAFTAs tonight with naming the, the wrong winner, I guess the they caught it that she didn't go up on stage. But I yeah. guess – but um, – I could see something like that happening again. I don't know why it didn't happen for so long, and now it seems to be happening a lot. But I don't. I never thought I'd see it again after the Oscars. Right? I yeah. Just, I can't believe it. And I, they're, they're, it's a computer error, maybe. Like because those envelopes that they're getting are obviously computer printed, but they should be double, triple checked before they're handed to anybody. I can't believe it happened at the Baptist. Right. Is it because we're relying too much on computers? Yes, yes or, I think so. Yeah, because the, it people that, yeah. The, the people that work at these these institutions are young. They're young people who probably wouldn't even spot that it's the wrong person. Maybe I don't know. Like, and it's pretty it's yeah. pretty limited the number of people that get to see ahead of time. That's true. Yeah, that's exactly right. You'd probably, by rights, it should be one person, maybe two in case something happens to that one person, <laughs> like, <laughs> like sickness or something. Yeah, no, that's true. It should never have happened again. So, okay, that's that's a good good choice. Let's hope it doesn't happen the third time. 
But what about our host? Um, we haven't really had a host properly for the last few years. We're either no host or a mixed host. Mi- mixed hosts. And Jimmy Kimmel has been given the uh, MC duties again. Uh, what do you think about this one, uh, Patrick? I'll go over you again first. Yeah, yeah, I I like having a host. I, I over the, the the non-host what they've done for the last couple of years during the pandemic. I I, I think. Uh, that it really kind of ties things together as to Jimmy Kimmel himself. I, I don't dislike Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, it's, he's not someone I'm, uh, I'm, you know, going to like, uh, condemn automatically. Uh, but yeah. I also don't get overly excited about Jimmy Kimmel. I think he can be funny <laughs> sometimes, uh, in small doses. And, and I watch his late show from time to time, but I don't, you know, it's not, I, I wouldn't be tuning in just for Jimmy Kimmel. You know, but I, I to be honest with you, the the number of people that I would be tuning in for if they were hosting is probably pretty small, and I would probably limit it to Billy Crystal uh, coming back for a tenth time. Uh, but that would that would yeah. probably be the only person I could think of off the top of my head. If Bob Hope came back from the dead uh, or Johnny Carson, maybe I might get really excited about the two of them. But other than that, I can't think. <laughs> of what about? Um, oh, sorry, Laurie. I was just about to say, would it excite you, Patrick? If it was Steve Martin and Martin Short, that's what I was gonna say. No, oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> no, it actually would not. Um, it's I, I like Steve Martin. I, I he pairs himself with Martin Short, and Martin Short, I'm I, I can give I could live without most of the time. Um, <laughs> so I think he drags Steve Martin down. I, I think Steve Martin by himself is very funny. Martin Short, I don't think so. I think Martin Short, sm- once again, small doses supporting character. But as a, a co-lead or co-presenter, uh, you know, a few months ago, they were on Saturday Night Live and I had high expectations and I was uh, woefully disappointed. Yeah. No, OK. And, and great minds think a lot, Laurie. We thought the same. I would love to see Steve Martin by himself or with Martin Short. I think that would be great. I, too, prefer a host. I th- I feel like it felt longer without a host instead of. You, you would have thought it would have been abbreviated without a host, but I felt like they they made it longer by having too many hands in the pot. And I I think that, that uh, Jimmy Kimmel can deliver. Yeah. Okay. I think so, too. I totally agree, and I, I've liked him for a long time. So uh, I do believe that Steve Martin and Martin Short would be awesome. But um, And Tiffany Haddish. I've got a soft spot for her. I reckon she'd be pretty good, too, if she was ever allowed to do it. Yeah, um, she would. Yeah, that's just my, my thoughts. Um, we'll go through, um, I think we'll go through while we're doing our predictions, if we have any uh, surprise long shots or that might get blindsided, you know, the, uh, the favourites. But I will ask you about a couple of favourites briefly before we get going. And the return of Brendan Fraser and Kihai Kwan, both actually just lost the BAFTAs, which was um, this morning, our time at the time of recording this. And I thought they were going to be the unlosable because according to Vegas betting before the BAFTAs, they were both absolute favourites. Do you think they're still absolute favourites for the Oscars? I, I do think they're they're still favourites, but, you know, that's what makes one of the things that makes the Oscars so fun. You never know. They, there can be surprises. <laughs> yeah, and you too, Patrick? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, all... All due respect to the BAFTAs, it's it's the British Academy of Film, and so they have a British perspective. The uh, Ki Hai Kwan and Brandon Fraser are cleaning up in American uh, awards uh, races mm. uh, across the board, and that's the primary component of the Academy here for the Academy Awards. So I'm presuming it, since they're winning those awards, they're very likely going to win the Academy Awards as well. But there are surprises. I mean, last year we all thought Chadwick Bowman was going to win and out of nowhere yeah. came Anthony Hopkins, which I really liked his performance, but I thought it would have been nice for Chadwick Bowman to, you know, get a posthumous Oscar. You know, he won everything else leading up to it and then took something else and it took nothing at the Academy. Yeah, no, I agree totally. Uh, I will uh, agree there. I think, you know, we'll see what, how it plays out. And I did want to mention something about Austin Butler because he also won a BAFTA, but we can talk about that when we get to the Best Actor category. I think that fits in with that because um, he also won the Golden Globe. And Everything Everywhere All at Once, just your opinion quickly on it receiving the most nominations at 11. Uh, Patrick, what do you think? 
it, surprised? It, no, uh, it's an extremely unusual film. And I will qualify with it, my answer with, I didn't hate it, <laughs> but I can see why a lot of people like it. Uh, I'm more surprised at uh, uh, Michelle Yeoh being nominated yeah. for Best Actress. I shouldn't be, but I'm. I was really surprised that she got that nomination, and she seems to be winning a, a few of the awards here and there. I, I got to tell you, there there's very few films this year that I got overwhelmingly excited about. This is different. I got to give it credit. I I was fascinated by the film. I watched it pretty much beginning to the end, and I I I, I got to say I somewhat enjoyed it. Would probably never watch it again. I wouldn't necessarily say it was the best film of the year but i think it's got a pretty good chance of winning yeah mm, i think um i think it's going to win a few but i'm not sure it's going to win as many as people think what are you about you laurie i i do think it's it's so hard to say and and i have to qualify that i didn't get to see every nominated film but i i do think it's gonna win a lot just being the most nominated and like patrick said it's a very interesting film it's a very different film although i think that's kind of the current hollywood trend is is just really different out there movies so there were a yeah. lot of them <laughs> but uh i i could see it it was really interesting and really well done i could see it cleaning up yeah, no, I think it might too. And uh, I wanted to have a quick, your thoughts on Andrea Riseborough. And I was going to leave this into her category um, for best actress, but because we're just going to go through our predictions and that, I just want, want to know what you both think about the campaign for her nomination. Now, I'm led to believe it was basically a social media campaign because the film studios did not actually uh, pay for, you know, advertising like many of them do and put uh, adverts, page adverts in variety and so forth. So it was word of mouth and a bit of social media and, and good Hollywood top stars, you know, friends were all getting together and got her a nomination. She didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't they didn't break any rules as far as I know. So I'm glad she's there. I've seen the movie and it definitely deserves some kind of nomination. She's so good. But what do you think, Patrick? Do you think it's a bad thing or a good thing that it happened for her? I mean, as long as no one's breaking the rules, I don't have a problem with whatever campaign they ran. I, I honestly, that's one of the few films I have not seen. <laughs> so I cannot honestly say as to her performance, um, yeah. you know, which I always feel bad when I don't get to some of the films, but that's one of the, the little narrower films where it didn't get multiple nominations in a variety of different categories. So it was further down on my list of films to see. Fair enough. Um, what about you, Laurie? Have you seen it yet? Or um, have you been I been here? didn't get to see it either. But honestly, I think everyone campaigns. That's it. Yeah. There's like you're saying there's ads and, and there's social media and stuff. I think it was surprising mainly because, it was shocking to me because I, I honestly hadn't even heard of the film, so I didn't know anything about it. But, but um, I, I, it's difficult. I, I don't, I don't like when people say someone didn't deserve. No, I mean they, they were nominated, they got it. So that, that's just hard. But I, there's so much campaigning that, that you know. Well, yeah, there, there's a game to be played in this process, and I don't fault anybody for the game. I, I think. In a perfect world, no one would run any kind of campaigns. No one would invest any kind of money in it. And whatever the Academy thought were the best nominees would nominate the best people or the best, you know, uh, best group of people, depending mm -hmm. on the category. But that's not the way, world we live in. You know, there is a process and there's and it's a money making process. There's too many millions of dollars invested in these films. And if they yeah. win an Academy Award, Was that's this potentially going to be more. Was this a, a small independent film? Yeah, yeah, really small. Could that be film. why the studios are angry <laughs> that they put all I this think, money? To... Oh, I think so. And also, yeah. it only played at a couple of film festivals, and it qualified because it played in a cinema, like some obscure cinema in, in one or two American cities for a week, something along those lines. So that's why nobody, very few people have seen it. I, I've been lucky enough to see it. It's about it's about to be released in Australia in, a, in about a month's time, but the distributor sent me a screener to watch uh, uh, some time back, so I've been on onto it for a while, but not everyone has. And for her, she's also, when we'll, I want to talk more about her herself during the Best Actress category that we get to, but 
she's been around for quite a long time and doing really good roles. So to me, this is something that's just built and built and built up for her, but um, I won't go into detail on that. Now, how about we start? I was going to go backwards on the sheet that I sent to you. Okay. So I was going to start with best visual effects and work back from there. And that, that finishes with best picture. Does that sound all right? Yeah, it works for sure. me. Okay. So let's get into our first category. Best visual effects, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. I think Avatar's got this as much as I'd love to see Top Gun get it. My pick's Avatar. What about you, Laurie? I agree. I'm I'm going with with Avatar, although I could see All Quiet or Top Gun sneaking in there. Although all the nominated ones had great visual effects. Batman was good too, actually. More think about it. Uh, Patrick, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's it's going to be unanimous Avatar. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the few categories it carries this year. And James Cameron has a history of incorporating and pushing the boundaries of special effects and Avatar reportedly. Once again, well, one of the films I have not seen, and I know that one's surprising, but I'm not a huge fan of the first film, so I, I wasn't rushing yeah. out to go see the second one. Um, but from what my understanding, especially the 3D imagery in it was a pretty astounding. So this, that's where they're going to reward Avatar is in the, in the technical categories. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, totally agree. And you didn't miss much. I didn't give it a great review, by the way. It was good to see on the big screen, but yeah, you didn't miss much by not seeing it at the cinema. Uh, best Sound, another technical award. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. Again, I'm just going with um, Top Gun, I think, is going to be in my heart, but I'm going to go with Avatar uh, to get sound as well. But if you've seen All Quiet in Western Front and wear headphones or you have surround sound on your system at home, the sound in that is incredible too and could be a dark horse. But uh, I think Avatar is my pick. And Laurie, what about you? Well, <laughs> I had a hard time with this one because, again, I think all of these films are deserving of their nomination. I'm going to go with Top Gun, but um, I'm also pu- I'm really pulling for All Quiet. But I feel like this is somewhere where Top Gun can can get rewarded. Yeah, and just quickly before you go to, go to you, Patrick, I think Elvis is also a really big chance because that incorporates yeah. songs and music into the sound. Yeah. And there's so many jump cuts because it's a Baz Luhrmann film as well. It's just <laughs> incredibly done. Uh, sorry, Patrick, what about you? Best sound? Uh, you know, my heart wants to go all quiet on the Western Front because I thought that with the sound in that was phenomenal. Yeah. But there was a film that potentially saved cinema to a large extent, and that was Top Gun Maverick. And uh, I have I have to eat crow because earlier in this year, I think on one of the podcasts I was doing with you, Shane, I made a comment on how Top Gun was going to be one of the biggest disappointments of the year because I hate you the did. first one. <laughs> I really did hate the first one. I am not a fan of the first film. And I got to say, I was entertained by Top Gun Maverick. It was a it was a, it's not a gr- groundbreaking film, but there was a lot of great visual and the sound was great. So I'm going Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, my heart says that, but yeah, I'll stick with Avatar. And just fun fact, Steven Spielberg, you pro- probably both heard this, Steven Spielberg said to Tom Cruise that he saved cinema with Top Gun Maverick. Yep. Saved the box office. <laughs> That's cool. It was a uh, fun movie. Yeah. Oh, I loved it so much. I'll mm-hmm. probably talk more about it when we get to Best Picture. Uh, okay, so Best Short Live Action. This will be quick because I have unfortunately not seen any of them. An Irish Goodbye. Ivalu, Lee Pupil, Night Ride, and The Red Suitcase. Uh, I'm just going to go with The Red Suitcase because I would like to have a really cool red suitcase one day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I haven't seen any of the movies. Um, I'm not disrespecting any of the filmmakers if they're listening. Just haven't had a chance down under to see them. Uh, what do you think, Laurie? Have you seen any of the live action shorts? I have not seen any of them. I just, and, and usually I'll watch the trailers at least, but I just have had, a, I've been busy and I haven't had a chance. So I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and say an Irish goodbye. Very cool. 
What about you, Patrick? I've actually seen one. I've seen Le Pupule. Yeah, Pupule. Oh, um, really? Yeah, cool. it's on. It's streaming on Disney Plus, and so I watch. It's like thirty-eight minutes long, and that's actually going to be my pick. I, I can't say it was. Uh, I I can't say I really really loved it, but um, I thought it was well put together, and it was a little bit interesting. So uh, I'm going to go with that one. Good choice. I hope it wins for you. At least you got to see one of them. Um, I should do that if it's on Disney Plus. I was unaware. Yeah. Cool. Uh, best short animated. The Boy, the Mole, and the Fox, and the Horse. The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, which is getting a lot of publicity, and Ostrich told me the world is fake and I know and I think I believe it. <laughs> I'm going to say My Year of Dicks because I keep hearing about it and I keep hearing the director getting interviewed. And, again, I'm sorry that I have not seen any of these, but that's my pick. And uh, Patrick? My heart wants to go with the year of dicks, but I'm go. I have not seen any of these either. But I would love for someone on network television being broadcast to millions of people to get up there and say the winner is my year of dicks. I'm going with the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse for no other reason than to have an interesting title. Yeah, they're all pretty good titles actually, and that last one's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> They all are, I guess. Uh, um, uh, Laurie, what do you reckon? Well, I didn't know My Year of Dicks was getting so much buzz, but I had also taken another shot in the dark, the boy, the the mole, the fox, and the horse. No worries. It sounds like um, it might do well, actually. Sounds interesting. Okay, best production design. I've got an out-and-out -out favourite for this one, so I'll just go through the list. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans. I am going with Babylon on this. The movie itself is touch and go at times, but the production design and the costumes are the two things that really stood out for me, even the music, actually. But um, I'm going with Babylon for sure. Uh, what about you, Patrick? Babylon. That's what I'm going with. I actually, once again, one of the films I have not seen, but I've heard a lot about the production design, <laughs> the film itself, unfortunately, uh, I've not heard good things on. But uh, I, th I think because the the period piece and the kind of what it was going for and once again, a film kind of about the inside Hollywood. Yeah, I'm going Babylon. Yeah, yeah. Inside Hollywood and um, yeah. Just ex extravagant all the way. Uh, what about you, Laurie? Well, <laughs> I haven't seen Babylon either. I'm I'm gonna go with with Babylon for the reasons you're saying, but I could see Avatar winning just because of the complicated production design for that. But I would love my heart would love to see the Fablemans win. Yeah. I, I, I well, I watched the extras and. Um, just what Steven Spielberg was saying about um, how detailed they were with yeah. recreating his childhood home. and But I think that's probably a long shot with the other productions, but I would love to see that. So that one's in your heart, the Fablemans. I'm a bit like yeah. that with Elvis, because Elvis being made in Australia, yeah, no Aussies would have worked on the production design, but I just think Babylon might grab it. Uh, best original song is the next one on this list. And I've got applause from Tell It Like a Woman, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, Lift Me Up, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, uh, Natu Natu from Triple R or R R R, and This Is a Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I'm sorry I don't have the singer's names or in front of me. That's my bad. Um, but I do know who sings a couple of them, in particular, Hold My Hand, and that's what I'm going to go for by Lady Gaga from Top Gun. What about you, Laurie? They're all, I know you love music as much as I do and songs. What, what do you think? I had a hard time picking. I just, again, took a shot, and I'm going with Lift Me Up by uh, Rihanna. Rihanna, that's right. She sings that. Good choice. They're all good songs, actually. Uh, the RRR one, I'm not too sure about, but it won the Globe. So uh, what do you think, Patrick? Yeah, I'm going with Natu Natu from RRR. 
Uh, I did not okay. watch the film because it's over three hours long and I just ran out of time, <laughs> but especially just to watch it for the song. But I've heard good things about the film and it's one I will get to eventually. I just did not have time before we recorded tonight. Yeah, it's unavailable as far as I'm aware in Australia. Otherwise, I probably would have liked to have watched it um, probably around the Golden Globes time, actually. Uh, best original score, All Quiet on the Western Front, Volker Bertelmann. Uh, Babylon, Justin Hurwitz, The Banshees of Inishirin, Carter Burwell, Everything Everywhere All at Once by Sun Lux, and The Fablemans, John Williams. Apologize if I'm pronouncing names wrong. Uh, I'll blame it on the Australian accent, but you were close it. to John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they pronounce it that way in America, John Williams. <laughs> yeah, cool. And I know I, I can say Carter Burwell. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front is really good music, um, but I'm going to go with Babylon again, actually. Um, just incorporates so many different sounds, and it's really good. Like, uh, just uh, I like Babylon probably more than most people, actually. I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to go with um, Justin Hurwitz and Babylon's score. Uh, what do you think, Laurie? I'll go with you first again, being music. This one's hard. I'm going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front with no confidence, but I, I would love to see the Banshees of Inishirin win something because I, I loved the film. but um, And I would love to see John Williams. I, I believe that was going to be his last time scoring, so I would love to see him win. But I'm, I'm going to pick false. All Quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> false. Hmm? False. Is that false? Yeah, he's, he's, do, do he's doing Indiana Jones this year. Yeah, oh, it's, I, I think you're... Read that. You're thinking of Indiana Jones. He, that's his last score, I believe. Okay. Well, oh, okay. And, and okay. Now well, he's maybe qualified. he'll get it for that. Yeah, now he's qualified that he's not retiring, but it doesn't mean he's necessarily going to do another score. He's just saying he's not retiring. So, well, the future, uh, I guess time will tell. He's, he's my all time favorite, so I'm always going to root for him. Yeah, um, I want to. I'd love to see him win, but he's going to be back next year for the Indiana Jones score. Even oh, if it's good. not a good score, he'll get nominated for sure. It'll be uh, a good score. Yeah, uh, Patrick, what about you? Um, All Quiet on the Western Front, maybe. You know, I you? love that film, All Quiet on the Western yeah. Front. But there's something I hate about that film. I hated the score. I absolutely really hated that score. The that score was just like nails on a chalkboard to me. It just oh, I loved the percussion. Oh no, I ever oh. oh, I I could not. I uh, the score was really distracting for me. Um, it really set the mood. No, it did not. <laughs> not in my view, <laughs> and be, and because it was such a polarizing sound, at least to me, that I I don't think it's going to win that category. Um, I do hmm. think. Uh, that there's going to be a lo lot of love shown towards John Williams because he is coming to the tail end of his career and it has been a long time since he's won an Oscar. And I really mm. doubt he's going to win it for Indiana Jones. And I don't think any one of these scores really stands out as, you know, really stellar in comparison. So I, I'm going with John Williams for the Fablemans. Good choice. Yeah, good choice. But I'll do. I reckon this could be the only thing, if it does win, the only thing that Fablemans yeah. will win. Oh, no, I won't disagree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, good choice. And, I, I mean, just my – I thought you'd go with All Quiet and Western Front, Patrick. There well, you go, because I, I know you said you love the movie. I, and the movie well, – the I, music to me was kind of – kind of bold or polarizing i agree but it didn't distract me or oh, I, make I, me I, hate it i i thought that that it fit the film though I, yeah i, I, I yeah, did not great. i thought it was it the music was woefully out of place and every time you would get these like this bizarre i don't even know how to describe it just almost gong like sounds just this like bah, it's just like it just <laughs> it just took it would i would literally it would take me out of the film uh, and despite that i still I still love the film, still think that is the best film that I have seen this last year, despite that horrible, horrible soundtrack. Agree. I'm not with that, but I agree it was one of the best films of the year. Yeah, no surprise it won so many BAFTAs today, that's for sure. And that that noise you just made, Patrick, reminded me of the music <laughs> in um, Inception. Yes. <laughs> that was the same. Hans Zimmer done the same thing in that real burring noise. I'm not going to repeat what you just did, but, I know, but yeah. I hated that it's, soundtrack too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, best makeup and hairstyling moving right along. All quiet on the Western front, the Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda forever, Elvis and the whale. 
I am stuck with this one. It's very hard. They're all really good. Uh, personal reasons, I'm going to go with Elvis um, with makeup and hairstyling. Australians involved, and they did such a great job on the whole cast and everything. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with Elvis. What about you, Patrick? The whale. It's one of the locks. I will almost uh, automatically predict this is a lock. I'm, I'm going with the whale. Just because of the fat suit? Yeah. Or, uh, no. I, yeah, I, okay. I, 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 I don't I, I, I want to say the F. I didn't want to really sort of say the, the F word, but that's what it is. The fucking fat suit? Is that what you're trying to <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be politically correct, but yes, that's it. Okay. Um, that's a lock from Patrick. And what about you, Laurie? Well... <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go with the whale. The same, re- I think it was the biggest transformation, okay. um, which tends to be rewarded. But um, I think Batman could, would could could pull could pull it off too, or or Black Panther. I just I didn't I just didn't think Elvis and All Quiet on the Western Front, while they had great effects and stuff, I just didn't think I, I don't know. Okay, they they all had great makeup and hairstyle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a tough job for the makeup and hairstylers on the on the sets, taking care of so many different people. But yeah, you're right. Uh, with the whale, they just had to take up, look after one person. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Best international feature: All Quiet on the Western Front from Germany, Argentina, 1985. Argentina, Close, Belgium, E O or E O. Not sure if it's a word or letters. Poland and The Quiet Girl. Island. I have seen three of these Argentina, 1985, All Quiet and Western Front, and The Quiet Girl. And I'm going to go with The Quiet Girl. I think it's amazing. I think All Quiet will win because it's been nominated for so many other things, but The Quiet Girl is an outstanding film on par with All Quiet. So it might be a bit of an upset. You never know. So that's my pick. Uh, Laurie, what do you think? I'm going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front. I, I, I will be shocked. If that doesn't win, I, I, because I think it was one of the, if not the best film of the year. And um, also because it was nominated for Best Picture. So that usually happens if a foreign film is nominated. Yeah, it's rare, isn't it? And it does double up. Maybe I should change my <laughs> view. I mean, kidding. Uh, Patrick, you're going with All Quiet? Yeah, absolutely going with All Quiet. Although I've seen, uh, I was very proud of myself. Saw two of the five films. I saw Argentina in 1985 as well. So, But uh, I'm going All Quiet on the Western Front, as I said, was my favorite film of the year. Uh, and I, I think he's very, much of the same reason that Lori just stated. It was nominated for Best Picture. I think it's going to easily lock itself in for uh, Best International Film. Yeah, a little bit like Parasite, um, yep. how that was hey, but nominated. That, one both. that was a, that that was one a both. Don't forget that one both. And I never, I predicted against Parasite winning that year, and and it shocked me. Same, me too. But it was uh, a good best, movie. Oh yeah, in the end, and I've seen it a second time because I wasn't that fussed with it or, when we talked about it, and I saw it that first time. But having seen Parasite a, again. Um, in black and white, actually. I don't know if that made any difference, but I saw the black and white version. Uh, best film editing, The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, editing, I don't know. So, that's so hard, but I'm going to go with as much as I didn't really like the film overall, the editing pretty much stands out in both Elvis and Everything Everywhere, and I'm going to go with Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's pretty incredible. So I will go to you first, Laurie. What do you think about editing? Wow, I've I've actually seen all of these. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm going to go with, I I don't think this is what people are saying, but I think the editing was amazing. I'm going to go with everything, everywhere, all at once, because that, Mm -hmm. that had to have been a really hard film to edit. It was nonstop editing, and it was all over the place. It would have been hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll make it uh, unanimous there. I'm going everything, everywhere, all at once. And now you can kind of see where I'm going to go from here because it, it, <laughs> where you start looking at editing, director, cinematography, which unfortunately everything, everywhere, all at once is not nominated for, and then best picture. You, you usually, if you're going with something at best picture, you want it to take the categories of these four categories. That's traditionally they, they win across the board. But besides that, uh, I agree with what both of you have said. Everything, everywhere, all at once was an amazing and very complicated editing 
uh, a, 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 or edited film. It was not as uh, easy as Tar, which had long dialogue scenes <laughs> that didn't need to be. Yeah. In fact, if there's a fault with Tar, is it probably needed to be a half hour shorter, so it needed more editing, and it, they didn't do it. That would have been half an hour less of the Aussie Kate Blanchett doing her thing, and I thought she was amazing. She was amazing. Best documentary short, The Elephant Whispers, Halut. I hope I'm saying that right. The How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. Uh, that's tough, this one, because I've seen three out of these five. And they're interesting, all really interesting. But the Elephant Whisperers was the one that I liked the best. So I'm going to go with Elephant Whisperers. Uh, Patrick, what do you think? I pulled one out of my ass on this one. I have not seen any of the five. I'm going with the Martha Mitchell effect. No reason, just because I have. I don't know what else to pick. Do you know someone called Martha Mitchell? Nope. <laughs> no? <laughs> there you go. And what about you, Laurie? Is it a, a sort of a lucky dip uh, guess guessing game for you? <laughs> It's a it's a complete guess. I have no idea. I unfortunately haven't seen any of them, but I hope to. I'm going to go with Haul Out. I'm going to go with the Walruses. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, documentary feature. All That Breathes. All the Beauty and Bloodshed. Fire of Love. A House Made of Splinters. And Navalny. 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 Is it? Okay, I'm not tipping that one anyway, so thankfully I don't have to say it again. Um, I'm guessing, but I'll go with Fire of Love because it sounds romantic. Uh, Laurie, what do you think? Again, I have unfortunately not seen any of them, so I'm just going to pick All That Breathes, just going off the description. Okay. And then Patrick? Well, I've seen two. I've seen Fire of Love and Navalny. Um, and and therefore, I'm picking all the beauty and the bloodshed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like your logic. <laughs> uh, they're they're not bad films. They're just not overly overly impressive. So, uh, uh, Fire Love, I had higher expectations for because it was something about volcanoes, and it was too much about the 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 scientists and not enough about the volcanoes from my p- perspective. Navalny is oh, interesting. It's not romantic at all, then. Yeah. Wasn't explosive enough. Yeah, it was exactly. Um, <laughs> and Navalny uh, was not nice. Yeah, it was like watching a <laughs> CNN documentary because it was a CNN documentary. So I, I Joe versus uh, the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the puns going. I love <laughs> I'm it. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I actually like the. Remember the Tommy Lee Jones movie Volcano? volcano? Mm-hmm. They came out the same time as Dante's <laughs> Peak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That was uh, the theme that year. Yeah, that must have been the theme. Um, but best costume design, one of my favorite categories. Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Tough because they all had such immaculate costumes. Honestly, that was so good. Uh, I interviewed the director of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, and we talked about Jenny Bevan in a lot of our interview. Um, so I got the inside on how they did the costumes there. And, of course, Catherine Martin is married to Baz Luhrmann and she does all the costumes for his movies and they're amazing. And the others are just great too, uh, Babylon especially. So I'm actually going to go with Elvis again. So, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with it. I'll stick with Catherine Martin for Elvis and that's your costume design. Um, what do you think, Laurie, in this one, costumes? I haven't seen – a few of them so i i get i think it's it's tough because i think they all have great costumes but i'm gonna go with black panther wakanda forever yeah they were pretty incredible costumes and the the, the cameras would like loom and zoom into them and stuff and loom over them so i agree good choice patrick what do you think well, I've seen four of the five, haven't seen Babylon, uh, but I'm going to give uh, some love to Shane and his beloved Baz Luhrmann. I'm going with Elvis. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. <laughs> uh, Catherine Martin's a lovely person, too. I've had a chance to talk to her a couple of times. Uh, best cinematography, all quiet on the Western Front. Bardo, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. 
Wow. Um, also different movies. So the cinematography is just different from different angles. And Mandy Walker, who did the cinematography for Elvis, you probably already know this, is um, I think will she be one of the, the, the third ever females to be nominated in this category? I think it's third um, along those lines. But will she win? I'm not so sure. I'm going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front for cinematography. What do you think uh, on this one, Patrick? It's tough. It is tough. And as much as I love All Quiet on the Western Front, I didn't necessarily think that it was amazing cinematography. I thought it was a well-made film. And the Tar, I thought, was a little dull, uh, pr pretty much standard. Uh, I'm going with Baz Luhrmann and uh, Elvis again here for you, Shane. So uh, I'm surprised you didn't, because uh, I thought this there was at least some this the the screen visually popped for that film. Yeah, and I think yeah, might be a lot of people behind Mandy Walker as well to elevate that female um, win for the category. Uh, what do you think, Laurie? Uh, do you agree with? Patrick and myself, or you got? I, I'm going to agree with Patrick with Elvis. I've seen everything but Empire of Light. I will say Bardo. I was very impressed by the cinematography, so that I could see that being a, a surprise. But I'm going to go with with Elvis. I almost want to change my mind because <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> betraying my country. But you're right about Bardo. Yeah, the, the cinematography was so good on all these movies, even Tar. Like it was just a different kind of cinematography, mm -hmm. but it was really good. Best original screenplay: The Banshees of Inisherin, and Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Uh, I'm going with um, oh, man. I think I'm, this will be the one Banshees will win. So I'm going to go with Banshees of Inisherin. I really liked all these movies. I, it, when it came to screenplay, I thought it was they were really well written and detailed, even though I didn't like the movies as much, including the Fablemans, but the screenplay was good. So, But I'll stick with the Banshees um, for my choice. Uh, Laurie, what do you think on screenplay? Oh, I actually saw all of these. I'm going to go with, with everything, everywhere, all at once, just because I think it was the most... Um, it was the most complicated screenplay, and I think it was difficult. I would love to see the Banshees win because yeah. I love that movie, but um, I'm going to go with everything everywhere. And, and it is best original screenplay, and original is definitely what everything everywhere is. So that's true. That could be an omen. Um, Patrick, what do you think? This was a tough category, uh, and not mm -hmm. because I thought – that that all five were contenders is this came down to two and especially in screenplay this is where you see a lot of other films you know kind of like a, 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 a second chance for a film that's not going to win best picture uh, i i think banshee's what shane is p predicting is a distinct uh, front runner i'm ultimately going with everything everywhere all at once same as lori uh, but i would not be shocked if banshee's wins this category this is where i think uh, the, the category where it could win pick up an academy award yeah, that's my way of thinking too. And adapted screenplay, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. Uh, I've not seen Living. I've seen the other four. Um, adapted screenplay is a tough one. I think maybe Women Talking. I didn't realise it was from a book, and the movie itself is quite confronting and harsh. And as much as I love Top Gun and, and All Quiet, not so much Glass Onion, uh, I'm going to go with Women Talking here. Patrick? I'm going with you, Women Talking. I think this is where Sarah Pauly's film is going to get some love and some attention. Uh, and uh, to be honest with you, I think the rest of the, the nominees are pretty weak. Glass Onion was really a really weak film. Uh, Top Gun. Yes. Is Top Gun. The strength of Top, Top Gun is the action and the cine, uh, the cinematography and the visual effects. It's not the screenplay itself. Uh, Living, I haven't seen, so I can't actually say anything about that. And although I liked All Quiet on the Western Front, you know, it's it's been a film that's been adapted before, and I don't, I didn't find anything about this adaptation groundbreaking or special. So uh, I, I think Women Talking is going to take this one. I'm yeah. going to make it unanimous. Okay. And you've both seen the film, obviously. It's pretty hard to watch at times, but it's so well I have, done. I haven't so seen, seen it. Seen it. <laughs> oh. 
I want to really badly, but I haven't been able to. It's very limited showing, and I haven't been able to get to see it. Yeah, Sarah Polly's. I've always liked her, but I love Sarah yeah. Polly. So, and I've heard such good things about it, and I and I feel like I've heard a lot of people think that it was snubbed in like other Patrick's, categories. Yeah, yeah, like Patrick said, it's time for her to shine. So we'll see on that one. I've loved Sarah Polly ever since Avonlea <laughs> when she was on that show as a child. Oh wow! Didn't even know that. There you go. Animated feature, uh, Pinocchio. Marcel the shell with shoes on, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Uh, I'm going to go with Puss in Boots. I didn't like Pinocchio, even though it's the favourite, but uh, have not seen The Sea Beast either, but I'm going to go with Puss in Boots. Uh, Laurie, did you want to go with Pinocchio or something different? I have not been, I haven't seen any of them, so I'm going to go with Pinocchio because it's favourite. Yeah, it's a huge. And I favorite. love Marcel the show. <laughs> I haven't seen this, but I've seen past stuff, and I loved it. Yeah, Marcel the show was okay. It was a little bit out there and odd, but um, I think Puss in Boots was so much better than I expected. It was like it shouldn't have been as good as it was for. A I heard it was good. Yeah, it's my son saw it. He liked it. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, have you had a chance to see all these? And what do you want to pick? Surprisingly, I've only seen three of the five. And usually animated feature films, since I have kids, is where I usually am able to easily see all five categories, all five films. I have not seen Puss in Boots. I have not seen Marcel the Shell. I've seen the other three. Uh, I think you guys are underestimating the per- first part of the Pinocchio title, Guillermo del Toro's. Pinocchio, and he has a lot of Academy <laughs> love. Uh, I'm going with Pinocchio. Yeah, I do. Yeah, like- I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. No, I, I do love Guillermo del Toro. So, yeah. and, and I have to say that I, I, I just watched that last weekend for the first time, and it is one not really a film for kids, <laughs> and two. It was I, I if this is I don't know if this is a true adaptation of the Pinocchio story, but it's it, not it, apparently. OK, uh, the, but I was very I was like, I am. It, it kept me interested. Like, where is this film going to go now? Um, so I was really I, it, it, I have to say I was I was kind of enthralled in the film. I can't say it was a great film, but it, I thought it was far better than the Sea Beast and Turning Red. And I haven't seen the other two. I liked her. I forgot. I did see Turning Red. I liked it. Uh, Turning Red was okay. Yeah, Turning Red was out like really early in the year last year, yeah. and it was a Pixar film. Yeah, it was a, the Red Panda, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I I just think thought Pinocchio was boring and just didn't like it, and I didn't like Tom Hanks's Pinocchio either. So that was also not really for kids. Same year came out the same year. Uh, best Supporting Actress is one of the big ones. Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow, The Whale, Kerry Condon, The Banshees of Inisherin, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie Hsu, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, it goes without saying that I think they're all pretty good, but uh, Angela Bassett for me, and we're not related, but I'm going to tip. <laughs> she's so good and had a lot to do um what do you think laurie about this one i'm gonna agree angela bassett but i i would love to see any of them win from what i've seen i haven't seen the i haven't gotten to see the whale yet but um i i could see like carrie condon sneaking in yeah, can I just say quickly, because Kerry Condon surprised everyone by winning. Well, she was not surprised, but she did win the BAFTA. And I know she was so good in that. She's so good in the movie and her speech was good. And, and I just don't know, the Academy voters will see that and they'll have her in her mind. Uh, Patrick, and I love you? Jamie Lee oh, Curtis. Yeah. I would love to see her win. I do too, but this, no, no. Yeah, it was an odd role. role. <laughs> it was an odd role and not even that good for her standards. Because she's done so many other things that have been different and better. But anyway, um, you, I'm glad she's she should have been nominated for actually. Halloween Ends. No, no, I'm not being that. That was all. That was horrible. Um, but just in general, maybe she'll get like a Sean, Sean Connery Career Award, you know, in a few years' time or something. She should. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, good. 
good choice. And what about you, Patrick? Well, as you talk about a career award. That's what Angela Bassett's getting. That's who I'm picking. So same as you guys. I, I would like Carrie Condon to get it, but I, I think it's going to go to Angela, Angela Bassett. Not, not so much for the, her role in this, which was not nothing, but it's not the role that I think that defines her career by any stretch of the imagination. She's given far, far better performances and far, far better films than that. Well, just just quickly um, before we move on, what did you think of the movie itself, Patrick? Because you're a little, you like Marvel movies probably yeah, a little do. bit better than I did, and it's not up for a Best Picture Oscar, which it shouldn't be. But did you like the movie itself? Your opinion on it was okay, is what I bet the best I could describe it. I thought it was overly long. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't really enthralled in it. I thought the best part of the film was the stinger at the in the credits that was the best part of the film where you got to see really uh, yeah <laughs> uh, i and without trying to give too many spoilers away to see this character no. who basically lost her entire family have this moment of redemption where she finds that her family still goes on in her nephew finding out the the existence of her nephew that she didn't know i thought that was a warm moment in a, in a film a very emotional warm moment in a film that was overly emphasized with special effects and uh, uh, needless fights. Uh, I, I thought that film was, uh, it got bogged down way, way too much in little details and didn't really pay off as well as most Marvel films. But I can't say other than Spider-Man No Way Home, too many films that have done that in the last few, few years from Marvel. I think they've all kind of been weaker installments and I, I'm hopeful for the future. They've been very weak, and Ant Man I actually really liked. So to me, that's the best, been the best Marvel film probably since Chang Shang Chi because I didn't mind Chang Shang Chi. Uh, Laurie, did you see? You saw Black Panther. Did you enjoy it? I haven't seen the the whole thing. Oh, okay, um, but Sorry, I enjoyed what I saw, and my my family really liked it. Oh, Patrick just gave you a spoiler now. Yeah, <laughs> I fell asleep, and not because it was boring. I was just really tired. Yeah, no, and Laurie, so did I. I fell asleep for yeah. 15 minutes during the film. And when I woke up, didn't miss anything. I picked up exactly, okay. And to me, that's reflective of how really unnecessary some of the plot details were that I don't know what I missed in that 15 minutes, but I woke up and knew exactly where we were at, where it was going on. Nothing had changed really and moved on. I, I do that a lot if I, try, if I start a movie too late after working or, or something I just it's just a stage of life I'm in it's horrible <laughs> sometimes after it takes me three or four times to get through and not because the movie's boring well, well trust me and I'll, I'll move on but I saw it at the big premiere and there was all these people there and it was a packed cinema a huge cinema and you know the opening you know the day before opening night opening day and people were not leaving but they were bored and they were tired, and it was so long, and yeah, so you weren't the only ones. Um, that is one critique I've heard of it, is that it was too long. Yeah, a lot of it could have been, talk about editing, could have been cut out. Okay, we've got five to go. Um, best Supporting Actor, I'll go next. Brendan Gleeson, Banshees of Inner Sheeran. Brian Tyree Henry, Causeway. Judd Hirsch, The Fablemans. Barry Keehan, the Banshees of Inner Sheeran and Key High Kwan, everything, everywhere, all at once. Personally, as we mentioned before, I, I thought that Key was going to be an absolute shoo-in, a definite winner of this. Now, I'm not so sure. I keep hearing Judd Hirsch is getting momentum. People like Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway, and that was a really good movie. I was a little surprised that didn't get um, a couple more nominations. That, that'll be in my snubs later. But... Um, I'm going to stick with Key Hai Kwan in this one. Uh, I think Judd Hirsch, his small moment in that movie was just the little moment. Its moment was unforgettable. But, yeah, I mean, they're all good. They're all really good, actually. But Key Hai Kwan, I think he's got this. He's so likable. He's been winning just about everything else. Not everything after the BAFTAs, but he's my tip. Uh, what do you think, Patrick? Uh, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I, you know, a, a backup to me would be Brendan Gleeson. Uh, I thought he was great in the Banshees. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I uh, tend to think that Judd Hirsch uh, shouldn't be nominated in this category because his role was so exceptionally small. 
uh, that I don't even think it rises to the level of the best supporting actor in the film. <laughs> I, 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 he has as much screen time in the trailer as he did in the film. And when I watched the film, I kept waiting for his character to come back. And Me too. Uh, obviously never happened. Yeah. And I went, really? He got nominated for best supporting actor for this? I was like, wow, that's... That's an exceptionally small role, um, but uh, I, I think Ki Hai Kwan is uh, probably going to take it. There's one every year or one every couple of years that there's a supporting actor or actress who's nominated that's in the movie for like a minute or two minutes or something. And I'll always go back to Judy Dench having eight lines in Shakespeare in Love and winning. So, but she's Judy Dench. Yeah, she's Judy Dench. Exactly. <laughs> Those eight lines are all she needed. But Judd Hirsch, he's pretty awesome. I like. Him. I mean, he's so good. And Running on Empty, I remember, like when he got nominated, like they were nominated for that in the River Phoenix movie. But um, yeah, I agree that he. I just I hear all this momentum for him, and I'm shocked. But I'm sticking with Kid. And so it's that might be a career a career award if he did win. That's what I was thinking, yeah. There's, there's one every couple of years, either, either actress or actor, where they're only in a movie, you know, five minutes or under or something, and they get nominated. So it's not but I'm going to make it unusual. unanimous. I, I'm going with... Um, um, Key. Yeah. <laughs> um, because, I mean, I think they were all brilliant, although I didn't see Causeway, but um, he's, he's won... Um, he's been cleaning up so yeah he has and and um causeway is a really good film really low-key drama but um i'll talk about that shortly uh okay best actress we've got a big one here kate blanchett one of um australians royal royalty basically she's australian royalty here but kate blanchett for tar anna diamas blonde andrea riseborough to leslie Michelle Williams, The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Uh, I, I, I can't not pick Kate. Sorry, I, I love Andrea Riseborough, and there could be an upset, but if there is going to be an up, an upset from Kate, it'll be Michelle Yeoh, potentially. Anna Diamas, I'd love to know out of both of you if you've seen Blonde and if you're surprised that she's been nominated, but um, I'm going to stick with Kate Blanchett. What do you think on this one, Laurie? Kate Blanchett was was brilliant. I could I could see her winning. I did see Blonde. I thought she was good, but she still you could still hear her accent a lot. Yeah. Okay. With, but I mean, she was good, but I was surprised that she was nominated. I, I'm going to go with Michelle Yeoh. Ooh, that's that's still a safe bet. Uh, what do you think, Patrick? Well. I'll say Kate Blanchett was the best thing of Tar. Uh, I thought she gave a stellar performance in it. Uh, I was mm-hmm. really bored by the film, <laughs> and as I, I've already commented, I, li- I was a good. I like this. Uh, it should have been a half hour shorter. Um, Anna de Armas. I did see Blonde. I'm not surprised she's nominated. I, I no chance in hell does she win. Um, but I wasn't really surprised that she was nominated because she was the the best thing in also a, a, a not too stellar film. I horrible she was yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, she was she was really good i just thought that i don't know yeah i'll just cut that out Lori. <laughs> <But, laughs> no, yes right. okay <laughs> uh you know uh, you know michelle williams i could see winning for the fablemans it's uh but yeah. ultimately i'm going well the way Lori's going i'm going with michelle yo i i think She's won okay. some. She won the Golden Globe. But she's she's getting a, a lot of love out there with the critics, uh, film critics, and critic circles uh, in the U.S. And once again, the biggest voting block. So that that's why I'm going to ultimately go with her for that role or for that film. Yeah, I I just want to say uh, Anna de Armas. She looked like Marilyn and she acted like Marilyn, but her she didn't have the voice. I think, um, and I don't know for a fact, but she was mostly probably nominated. Yes, of course, she was outstanding in her own way in that film. But endurance, the the stuff that she had to endure during the film, and that, and I know it's just the movie and everything's make believe, but it was a pretty hard role to do. Yeah, it was. Yeah, she was. She was. It was. She was good. But yeah, I, I think and, I almost think it's because she looked so much like her. 
And yeah. and she did such a great job acting that the voice took me out so much. If she hadn't done such a great job, it would. Yeah, have see, taken I didn't so see. Much. I mean, I didn't see. Oh, maybe I should have taken more notice, but I didn't hear the drop. The voice drop out. You know, I didn't hear it as much as what you. It what was just saying. a little bit. Just certain things you could hear her mm. her accent a little bit. I mean, it was really, and I can't do accents. Who am I to critique? <laughs> but, um, but I think that's a compliment to her that she was so good that that would remind me that she wasn't Marilyn Monroe. Mm. And and I'm just too familiar with Marilyn Monroe too. You know, just she's sure. one of my favorites. So um, it's hard to play an icon. Oh, definitely. And I mean, you're saying, Patrick, that Tar was really boring and should have been shorter, but Fableman's to me was boring. I found that monotonously slow. Oh, I slow loved it. I loved no, it. Not. I, you know, the, I, I will agree with you. The Fableman's went on too long, but when it ended, I was like, I want something. I want something else to this story. <laughs> I mean, there were parts okay. of it I went. They they spent too much time, too much detail on. But the, as to the journey of the lead character, I wanted kind of that complete circle of where he ultimately goes, you know. And mm. I, I, and I felt denied that. So that was my problem with that film. That was a very long film too. In fact, this year in general, everything I seemed to watch be, used to it seemed to be two and a half hours <laughs> minimum. At all times, even the animated films, Pinocchio and the Sea Beast were two hours. I mean, it's just everything was really, really long. Another right. trend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind long movies, and if they're slow, they're slow. If they're interesting, but to me, I don't know. I just lost interest in the Fablemans after a while. But Michelle Williams, amazing. Yeah, don't get me wrong. The acting was all good. Paul Dano as well. Uh, okay, best actor we're up to. Um, yeah, we'll do actor next, then director, and then picture. So, best actor Austin Butler, Elvis, Colin Farrell, The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Brendan Fraser, The Whale, Paul Mescal, After Sun, and Bill Nye, Living. So, I haven't seen Living, I haven't seen After Sun. So, I can't comment on those two. And I've been going on about Austin Butler since I first saw Elvis. Months and months and months ago, uh, Colin is amazing in the Banshees of Inisherin. One of the, I mean, he's always been a really good actor, but it's just is like he's hit peak here. But the whale, um, I, I don't know if I can see Brendan Fraser losing. I mean, I just can't. I would love to see Elston Butler win, but I'm going to go with Brendan Fraser. What do you think, Laurie? On this one, it's tough. I'm going to go with Brendan Fraser, but I mean, I got to say. So Austin Butler was hard for me. Elvis, another one of my favorites, but he was so good. He was, he was, he was really good. And I know he's won a lot, but Colin Farrell gutted me (laughs) in the Banshees. That scene when he just broke out crying. Yeah. And he was, he was so good, but I'm going to go with Brendan Fraser and I didn't see the other two. I love Bill Nye. He's always good, you know, and I hear he's fantastic in it. And Paul, Paul Mescal, I haven't seen much of him, just a television, couple of television sort of series that he's done. But, um, yeah, no, I, I agree. He was he broke your heart, Colin Farrell. He was so good. What do you think, Patrick? Is it hard for you too, or have you got someone that you just know is going to win? No, it's Brendan Fraser. I, I feel pretty confident about that. Uh, as to Austin Butler, I know I mean, he won the BAFTAs and everything like that. I, I have the same problem with Austin Butler as I did with Anna de Armas for Blonde. And the fact I've seen so many people do impressions of Elvis and Marilyn Monroe that yet another impression does not impress me. Uh, it, it's hard to impress me. Uh, he didn't do a bad job, but it, 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 I don't. I don't know what if he really brought much more than the impersonation to the role. Uh, I, 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 he didn't do. As I said, it wasn't a bad job, but I didn't. I, I, I was not a huge fan of Elvis. I really was not. No, me either. It was not. It was not what I wanted it to be so desperately, and that I, I think it got overhyped, and I think it continues to be overhyped. So that's why I'm going with the whale. Remember, it's a Baz, uh, because it's a Baz Luhrmann movie, though, yeah. everything is distorted, whether they're based on real people or not. So it's sort, of like a, it's sort of like a Baz Luhrmann version of Elvis, I guess. Um, my, mom, I look at it. my mom is the biggest Elvis fan I've ever met. 
and she started i so i wanted to 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 take her to see it i wanted to watch it with her but she was ill so i bought it and um yeah we were watching it and she's like i don't like it i don't like it because she didn't like seeing the trauma of his life yeah and of course it did focus so, on a lot of the trauma yeah just and and she was more and it didn't do the performances and stuff the the mm. music of it you know it would just show like a snippet and it would be mm. distorted like you said so she she didn't like it yeah it definitely wasn't one uh big musical you know classic Elvis sequences that was more about trauma and you only saw jump cuts yeah. and different songs yeah i get it but i liked it yeah same one i liked it a bit better than I – I think the the acting and it was better than the actual movie itself, but I'll talk about that during Best Picture. Uh, best Director. All right. Banshees of Inishir and Martin McDonough. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. The Daniels. The Fableman, Steven Spielberg. Tar, Todd Field. Triangle of Sadness, Ruben Osland. Ooh. You know, I've been giving this a lot of thought and – I just think the Daniels have got this. Um, I'd like to see Todd Field win, even Spiel- Spielberg, even though I didn't like his movie. It's still Steven Spielberg, but uh, I'm going to go with the Daniels. And uh, what do you think, Patrick, on this? Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's uh, I'm, I'm riding that horse all the way to the end, even though I, it was not my favorite film of the year. Uh, it's the film I think is going to win Best Director and ultimately Best Picture. Oops, I spilled <laughs> Out of those three movies, I think directing wise, it would have been one of the most creative and, and trickiest. That's for sure. Uh, when it comes to production, not so much the acting. I thought the acting was better in some of those other movies. Uh, what do you think, Laurie? Um, the director. I'm going with um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay. Uh, Triangle of Sadness surprised me. I think because yeah. of. The title, I, I wasn't interested in seeing it, but it was good. I was very grossed out, but it was good. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. Actually, I liked that and the menu as well. Oh, yeah, I saw the menu. That was good. Yeah. that I actually was thought that um, Anna Taylor, 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 I can't talk, uh, Anna Taylor, uh, Joy, Anna Taylor, Anna Joy. Taylor Joy should have been nominated yeah. for that role. Yeah, she, she's pretty much another snub as well. All right, finally, best picture. They've got the whole 10 that you can allocate this year. They've gone all 10, so we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Way of Water, Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Uh, I just... I just think it's going to be an interesting one. I don't want everything everywhere all at once to win. I actually think All Quiet and Western Front would probably be one of the few that might win it, but maybe they're flying this, this straight, the USA flag for Top Gun. There seems to be a bit of talk about that, but it can't win Best Picture, can it? No. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't want to, but I'm going to say everything everywhere all at once. And I, I don't, don't want to, but I think it, I don't think All Quiet and the Western Front's going to win uh, International and Best Picture. I think that one of the dark horses, and it's a long shot, but it's women talking. It's actually a long shot, but I don't know. There seems to be a few people talking about it on podcasts and in variety. So um, anyway, I'm going to go with everything, everywhere, all at once. And Laurie, what do you think? I'm going with... It, it had the most nominations, and I think it's yeah. going to have the most wins. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay. And Patrick, is it a trifecta? Yeah, I already announced it. Uh, you already announced uh, it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going everything, everywhere, all at once. All right. Now, I mean, I don't know if you've got any surprises or snubs, but I'll go through a couple of mine real quick before we finish up. I think the menu, um, as we were just talking, was a bit of a snub. I, I don't know about best film, but... Um, I think maybe Ray Fiennes or Anya Taylor-Joy, there could have been a spot for either of them. Babylon, I'm really surprised it did get not, not get nominated for Best Picture. I mean, I don't know what it would have been, ta- what it would have been taken out. Maybe Women Talking or um, Triangle of Sadness, but I really thought the spectacle of Babylon would have got it into the 
10. And Mia Goth was a snub. Um, Mia Goth played Pearl in a movie called Pearl. And I don't know if it's because it's a horror movie or not, but that is one of the best performances I've seen in a long time, not only just last year, but it, Mia Goth is, was a force of nature in this movie called Pearl, which was actually a follow-up to X. Um, she's in both movies, and she's got another one coming up from the same director as well, coming up soon. But Pearl, if you haven't seen it and don't know who Mia Goth is, that is one of the most outstanding performances I've seen. So there's some snubs from me. Um, have either of you got any surprises or snubs? Oh, Tom Cruise, too, I thought might have been a, a dark horse for an actor. I'm not saying don't have Paul Meskell or Bill Nye there, but I thought Tom Cruise was, was a bit of a surprise not being added as director. Um, either of you guys have any snubs or surprises? I, you know, I, I didn't think the performance was actually that good or worthy of a nomination, so I'm not surprised it didn't get nominated. Well, I guess I'm not disappointed that it didn't get nominated, but Tom Hanks for Elvis, because of the film getting as much love mm. as he did from the Academy, I, you know, I kind of wonder if Judd Hirsch bumped him out, is that because uh, I, I would have thought that he would have been in there in that particular category. Um, it, obviously, he was the biggest name actor in that film uh in that production and so i was a little surprised he didn't get and, and once again I, I i'm glad he did not i i thought it was a senior scenery chewing performance uh but i didn't uh, and i didn't necessarily enjoy it but the film the the cat the, that film got so much love from the academy I yeah thought it, that um, i was actually shocked he didn't well, even Baz Luhrmann, for director, didn't go, didn't make it, and I thought it, he was a bit of a shoe in actually, um, but he didn't. And then Viola Davis is another one I forgot to mention, yes. the Woman King. She was outstanding uh, and didn't get a look in. Uh, what do you think about that, Laurie? Have you got any snubs or surprises? Um, I forgot about Tom Hanks, but now that you say that, Patrick, I remember when I saw the film, I thought, I think he could get an Oscar nomination for that. He was really good, and and mm. I forgot that it. I was watching Tom Hanks. No, oh, I, um, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I haven't seen women talking yet, but I hear people talking and saying that they were surprised that there there wasn't an, more nominations for that. I also haven't gotten to see the Woman King yet, but I've also heard that that was really good, and yeah. um, I'm surprised that. Um, Viola Davis wasn't nominated from what I've heard and what I, and the, the previews. I saw, I really enjoyed She Said. I thought that yes. was, yes. Um, it kind of reminded me of like um, The Post and, you know, those kind of movies that have Spotlight. been nominated. Yeah, exactly. That have been nominated in the past. And I thought the acting was really good. So I was surprised that there weren't any nominations for that. Actually, I said that when I reviewed it, when I first saw it, she said, uh, I said, you know, on radio, I was, when I was just talking about it, that it was definitely going to get Oscar nominations. It was like up there. But yeah, that is another one I forgot about. You're right. Um, good choices. So without much further ado, I just want to thank you both. Thank you, Patrick. Any final words? No, uh, I'm looking forward to having the most accurate predictions yet again every year, as always. <laughs> uh, excuse me, my son has been giving you a run for your money. I know, he does very, very well. You should be very <laughs> proud of him. You could learn something from him, Lori. So. <laughs> Any final words, Lori? No, thank you for, for hosting this, Shane. And, and maybe we should have a uh, wrap-up after the Oscars and talk oh, about yes. what pa what panned out. <laughs> Yep, definitely. Maybe a couple of days after the Oscars, uh, I'll sober up because it's on a Monday here. <laughs> and I'm very busy. That might be right. fun. <laughs> Could be. It's very busy for me because it's a Monday in Australia. It's on Sunday, March the 12th, uh, 2023 in the US, but it, obviously it's a Monday our time. And, I, you know, the whole day is committed from about 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm talking across... 19, 20 odd radio stations across the country, and then they want like something after it to have like comments. And but there's drinking involved and lunches and everything. Such so a huge day for me. I can't uh -huh. wait. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. And I love getting your messages. Of just for the listeners out there, Laurie will message and say, "Oh, my son's got another one right. Oh, <laughs> another one right." So he usually down with it. Patrick. <laughs> 
<laughs> down with Patrick. That's <laughs> but it's always fun, and I'm really glad that um, we, we, I mean, we're all friends anyway, but we can talk so um, candidly, and we you love Oscars and, and awards season in general. So thank you, everyone out there for listening. Um, this is a, another edition of Movie House Connection. Uh, another edition of Movie House Con- Concessions. Done with. Bye for now. See you at the movies. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The song Rock On Bretta is brought to you by Marwan Nimra at Nintentine.com under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Movie House Concessions, the MHN Podcast Network, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment LLC unless otherwise noted.